Hi guys, welcome to another Dead Good Walk. Today we're in the village of Eam in Derbyshire, England, which is famous for the things that happened here during the plague in 1665 and 1666. So this is the place the plague first arrived in Eam. Um, it was on a piece of cloth that was bought from London which contained fleas that were infected with the plague. Now it's thought the plague killed 260 villagers here which was 75% of the population. Now you'd expect the graveyard here at St Lawrence's to be full of plague victims but the church was actually closed during the well pandemic I suppose it was um, and the family had to bury their own dead in gardens or meadows or fields they had or any other land near their home. I'll try and have a quick look inside but I think they're, they're setting up for a wedding or something. If you were able to see that, there's a huge uh, skeleton up on the top of the arch. So this is the uh, plague register where uh, all the plague victims were recorded. The skull and crossbones there. I think these are called, uh, is it uh, tabletop tombs or something? I'm not sure. Or box tomb, maybe. Cool little egg timer and angel there. I'll do a quick lap of the graveyard and then I'll, I'll take it to see some graves in gardens and some. Uh, up in the fields. So this is interesting, uh, this is a stone of John Hancock, but I think it's just a, a memory a memory stone kind of, his real graves uh, up on the hillside where, where I'll take you in a minute. Joseph Sykes Bromley, I think that is. 
68 years and they must be his relatives so this is interesting you can't really read any of the text on it but you can see he was a blacksmith or mason interesting another couple of tombstone tourists there um, I'm awkwardly wearing the same shorts as the guy so I'm going to try and avoid him as much as possible So they're Joseph, the son of John and Ellen Gregory. And there's his mum, Ellen, wife of John Gregory. And Edmund, son of John and Ellen Gregory. Marmaduke Middleton, youngest son of M. M. Middleton, Esquire. Oh, they sound really well to do, don't they? Wow. So this is a Celtic cross from the 8th century, featuring a Saxon design I think it is. These are a couple of uh, medieval tombstones. I think they're medieval as well in the corner. And these are from the, the. These must be from the plague sort of era. You can see on this one, you can't really read it, but it says uh, 1665. <laughs> Now I'm going to head up uh, Lydgate and show you an example of uh, burials in a garden. Uh, these are the graves of George Darby, who died on the 4th of July 1666, and his daughter Mary, who was just 20, who died on the 4th of September 1666. Uh, George's wife survived, but she died in 1674. How weird is that? Just graves next to packed cars, uh, people's washing, trampoline over there. So this this must have been land in their garden or near to their house. So this part of the village was used for mass burials. Um, and the sign up there said that there were headstones here, but they were later removed. And I, I did read somewhere that I think people used them you know, either in their gardens or as flooring in the house, something like that. It's quite common to have a stone floor in your kitchen in this part of the world, or all the way through your house even. So 
So this is an old chapel that was built well after the plague was here. Um, a bit jealous someone's living my dream there of living in a, a church or a chapel. Now we're going to head up Riley Lane which is on the outskirts of the village just to show you the Riley graves. So these are the Riley graves where Elizabeth Hancock buried her husband and six children who all died within I think it was eight days of each other. You know, Elizabeth had to bury her husband and children um, on her own so she had to dig the graves and drag them down from the hillside up there from the farmhouse where they lived. Um, and she got no help because everyone at the time was scared of catching the plague. Well, back in the churchyard now. I think I'll wrap this one up. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, look into the history of Ian yourself. It's a fascinating story. See you on the next one.